Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, let me eat. I don't really have a lot planned for today, but I need to record ideally a couple episodes because I am, uh, it's a long weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, this weekend, I need to post something at the end of it. And I need, I'm going to be out of town next weekend. So I need to, I need something to post for that. But I wanted to do a little, I wanted to do two things. One is talk about uh, Maker Faire, which was last weekend. And the other is do a little tutorial on mining because um, had a having an interesting little discussion with Lawrax on the server um, about the best way to find diamonds. And this isn't original by any means, but this is how I mine. So my, my main mining shaft here runs I have two by two and it runs out this way. And when I need to go back home, I just put torches on my left and go there to the end and then I go up to my place and then I I carve off little side branches every 11 blocks see from here it's two four six eight ten and then on the 11th block I dig in and I alternate them so that they're not facing each other because if if you're running from here and it goes straight across to the other you might actually miss that this is the main hallway so I just then do these little branches. Here's my current branch. And I put torches down on the floor in front of, oh, hey, Eric's on. In front of the uh, mines that I have not like finished off. Um, <clears throat> so let's go down here and I will show you what I do. This is a long walk, so while I'm walking or running, we can chat. So last weekend was Maker Faire. Uh, Maker Faire was pretty cool. Uh, it's every year in the Bay Area. It's the Bay Area Maker Faire is what they call it. It's in, at the San Mateo County Event Center. It used to be the county event, the county fair, county fairgrounds. That's what they called it. Anyway, so it is, uh, it's every year late May, like just usually the weekend before Labor or Memorial Day, I think. And this year it was the 18th through the 20th. I went up with Crash Space. We had a booth and there were five of us who went up and, and worked at the booth, talking to people and showing off things. We had various projects. We had a, a group project, which was the Crash Bot, which uh, Barb makes things actually sort of led the effort on and making um so it was a little robot that had an led panel for a face and it had a little flip book it in its body and it had arms that moved it was pretty cool and they were still working on it during the fair so people actually got to see the uh the making in progress and uh yeah so that was uh that was like the new big thing that we had that we were showing um a new version of the levitating water fountain it didn't entirely work out it was connected to a little dispenser so and the water fountain it, it's a it's a fountain of water that drops drips of water and then there's a bicycle pump attached to it and when you push on the bicycle pump it slows down and then it reverses the water so the drops flow upward which is pretty crazy to see um, and they, they had a little game set up so that when you there was when you pushed a button to play the game it put a little range there were some LEDs on the side and put a little range of LEDs and if you could keep it uh, in the LEDs in the that range of LEDs for a certain amount of time it would dispense a little a little token a laser a little laser cut crash space token um, it wasn't the most intuitive thing. I think the game needs a little bit of tweaking. So they disconnected it and just had it. So you push on the, the bicycle pump and it 
the water reverses and uh, set up the dispenser as a separate thing um, we had a couple old projects as well or that were that had been there last year um, Barb makes things has her she has a little instrument that she calls a hexachord um, there are videos of that on her YouTube channel which I will link to and it's the second version of the hexachord and it's it's pretty cool it's got little it's like six ukuleles all fused together like a david cronenberg thing and then you uh it's got little servos with picks attached to it and it plucks the strings so it kind of plucks them in a random sort of fashion which is kind of cool uh, <clears throat> and then i had the my the 8-bit ukulele uh there as well which has been it's like the third year i think that 15 16 17, oh gosh the fourth year anyway that um the, the ukulele has made its appearance at maker fair but i enjoy bringing it because i don't i can't really play it i can i can strum a couple things i know a few chords i know the basics of how to play it but i don't really know how to play any songs on it i just haven't really practiced with it and there's lots of people at maker fair who do play ukulele um so the cool thing is that uh people would come along and um and and could actually play it so i got lots of pictures of people playing it. i got a couple of videos of people playing songs that's really cool to hear this thing i made sound actually make beautiful sound make music which is pretty cool Woo! we're at the end of the mine um okay at the at the end of this particular branch but let me just finish up the ukulele the ukulele i made it's a laser cut it's all laser cut plywood and mostly laser cut plywood and a few things i made it with all basically all the tools at at uh craft space <clears throat> so it's uh i don't know it's a fun project and i'm actually now making plans on redoing it or making another one out of some nicer wood uh, because it's you know it's plywood it's not it's not the greatest thing in the world and plywood is p probably the worst possible wood you can use to make a a stringed musical instrument out of because plywood doesn't resonate very well and so if i get some decent tone wood it should okay let me eat here again okay here's my philosophy of mining so i am standing at if i put on f3 uh, my my z is 12 and if i look down i'm looking at 11 and that's pretty much where you want to be because the lava lakes tend to form at this level and so you're not you're not likely to dig into the side of a lava lake it's possible it does happen we ran by some obsidian back there which is exactly what happened and see I'm, I'm not digging out huge area i'm not digging out the whole area like over in the big dig which is a perfectly acceptable way of doing things if you have a uh, beacon set up but this is trying to dig as little as possible to maximize finding as much stuff as possible down here because diamonds can can generate all the way down to the bottom of the world and up a little bit above here so we're kind of in the middle of diamond range diamonds are the hard thing so that's what we're uh we're trying to maximize for everything else is bonus so uh and as you can see i'm digging very reg regular regularly here so i dig in from from the main shaft entrance i dig in four place a torch on the floor and then i walk up to that point and then i dig over four to the side i lost count and then i put a torch on the wall now honestly the torch on the wall is optional because the lighting is fine in terms of spawning but if this torch gets knocked out then this becomes very dark so it's redundant it does mean that every four blocks in i'm putting down three torches but so it's it's a little bit heavy on the torches but that's fine so then i can then what i'm doing here is just trying to expose chunks of just sides of blocks so here i've got some iron and let's see what else we get 
and I pick up all the blocks that I'm breaking down. Oh, there's some more iron and there's some gold. <clears throat> now you don't need to dig, whoops. Now, as you saw, I, you can dig five blocks in, but from, from here, you can't put a torch on the fifth block in. You can put a torch on the fourth block and that's why I do in fours. And because there are one, two, three blocks here before between each of these little branches, twigs, whatever you want to call it. Most ores generate in two by two by two veins. And so if there's if there's a vein that's going to be here, chances are it's going to be in one of these as well or in one of these. So I don't actually need to see all sides of the blocks behind here because their chances are they're not going to be anything special. Now they could be um, if you're going to, and there, it is possible to get single, single block diamond veins, but it's not, uh, not necessarily, but see here, this iron two by two. So from here, we're just going to dig out this iron and then I fill everything in. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say OCD, but I do like cleaning up after myself. Uh, it does kind of make it look like there's nothing there when I get done, but I don't end up with blocks, spaces like this where I have to worry about lighting it. And see this clear, this sort of showed the way towards some redstone. Now the next tunnel over probably would have gotten to that redstone if I hadn't given up and abandoned that tunnel uh, before I got to this point. And I will give up and abandon a branch um, when it gets to a point where digging on becomes very, I don't know, painful. And I'll show you probably in a minute what that means. Because when I get to a a cave or ravine or something, it becomes a little more challenging. Cleaning up after yourself. And notice I'm going in and picking up the, the blocks in the side on the little twigs here. I think I already mentioned that. You don't have to. If you don't feel like you need the blocks, you could just leave them there to despawn. And then you have to empty your pockets less frequently. I, however, am a pack rat in this game. So I will pick up all the blocks. So we go along like this and I'm kind of hoping that we will actually come across some diamond here just to show that this indeed does work. Um, Lorex was saying he had been doing lots of mining and had not found any diamonds. And I think he just hasn't gone far enough. Uh, I, I suspect is what the thing is. I went over and looked at the area where he was digging and his idea of digging a long ways is not the same as my idea of digging a long ways. Because as you can see, we're at Z minus 1531. We're underneath an ocean right now. Um, so this this branch is 1500 blocks long. So it's a kilometer and a half. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's entirely possible to dig for quite some time in this game without finding diamonds just have to maximize your potential for doing so. So Maker Fair, I think pretty much talked about everything there. More iron. Oh, one, two, three, four. There we go. So yeah, Maker Fair was good. The, uh, the the ukulele is an open source project. I have not yet posted the 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 plans, the the files. The you know anyone could use to make one. I heard a bat. That must be near a cave. Um, to the website. Uh, so I, I was giving out my email address and. Uh, Oh, cave. Okay. So 
this is have to be a little careful. Hi, Mr. Bat. Whoa. Distracted by the bat. Oh, this goes up a bit. Have to be a little careful not to get lost. Um, these caves sometimes start branching off. And notice I'm walking by lots of... Lots of uh, ores. Hello. Let's eat. There we go. Um, whoa. Those skeletons don't often miss when you're on hard mode. In fact, it's kind of designed for them to miss like a hit 100% of the time. Okay. So gave out my email address a lot to people who were expressed interest in making their own ukulele and um, I have only gotten one actual email so far from somebody saying hey I want to I want to make one so um, that's cool so I have to I have to I have to make some changes to the plans before I post them or send them out um, people it's interesting people kind of expect looking at it like oh how much do you charge for them it's like I'm not selling them they're a lot of work to put together and when I described it uh, my my jokey response when people asked me how long it took me to build is I said oh about five years which it kind of did oops um, but uh, I don't expect somebody else to take five years because I spent a lot of time setting it aside and just sort of work, you know, working on other things. And um, when it when it came down to actually building it, like after I had cut all of the individual pieces that go into it, um, it it was about two weeks of work to assemble it, which is about right for a ukulele um, if it's being prepared in a traditional manner which this one was uh, it was just kind of funky it had a kind of a funky shape to it so um, <clears throat> and the next one will actually not go any faster because the uh, hello Mr. Bat I want your head These bats are annoying okay um, because I want to, the next one I want to build out of a nice traditional ukulele wood like koa. Um, I'm also considering mango, which is gorgeous wood. Uh, and I want to finish it properly, which kind of means, uh, doing, uh, shellac and hand polishing in multiple layers of shellac. So it's that's gonna be, and I've never done that before, so that's gonna be an interesting, uh, interesting learning curve. Uh, so, but then people ask, okay, he's not behind me. Oh, there's more than one zombie they, somewhere. Hello, Mr. Zombie. Oh, and the world comes rushing in. Oh, don't let them get around you. Okay. We're okay. Eat. Okay, 
there's not going to be anyone up there because it's there's lava oh sorry for that crackling in the right channel if you're hearing it is there a zombie or is there a spawn over here or was it just a pack plus the uh social spawning okay uh okay back to story sorry uh people ask how much i'm selling it for and then i'll tell them i don't i'm not selling them because i would have to charge a lot of money uh to cover materials and time and all that good stuff okay we're gonna ignore the zombie sounds one two three four and hello mr bat i really want your head Okay, so when I come to caves like this, pop up, pop up, I then actually build out the tunnel <laughs> into the cave. And if I run into a ravine, I build it out across the ravine. So when you're in the ravine, if you enter it from a different direction, it becomes really obvious what's going on, at least to me, if you know what I'm doing. Uh, but it's not necessarily ooh, gold not necessarily uh, I don't know it, one two three four um, it becomes a little tedious to do and uh, it ends up being a little bit resource intensive because you have to have all these blocks And then sometimes you I run out. I like using the regular stone and sometimes you run out anyway So it becomes a little bit of a pain and if I come across a big enough cave area or the caves become too much where it's like all I'm doing is uh, Building building new tunnels Then I just I kind of get sick of it and I will place a torch on the wall at the end of this branch and move on that's the way i do it Oops. which may be different from the way you do it which is perfectly fine don't claim that it's the best approach it just works for me okay back to the ukulele <laughs> So people ask how much I'm selling them for. I say I don't sell them. And then they're like, oh, I'm like, but you can build one. It's open source, which is a little bit of an odd concept for a musical instrument. Um, since open source typically refers to software and or computer hardware like electronics. Uh, and it's not the most sensible thing in the world when it comes to electronics, as it turns out. Um, there is a alliance of electronics people who believe in open source, the whole open source philosophy uh, called the open source hardware alliance, I think. Um, and so they, they sort of launched three, four years ago, four or five years ago, something like that. And, and, it, and, but they don't have their own specific license that they use they just sort of say ah oh, we expect that people will use a, an appropriate license oh I don't need these torches either or arrows so <clears throat> that's uh a lot of zombie sounds I, there must be a spawner nearby anyway um so so i put the open source hardware logo on the ukulele on the inside where a manufacturer might normally put their logo and was talking to wendell um of evil mad science labs and uh, he's one of the board members of the open source hardware foundation and he was tickled pink when he saw that. And he was like, oh, you're gonna release the, the source? I'm like, yes. And then I feel bad because I haven't yet. So I started working on organizing it. And the one thing, the one change I want to make 
is uh, I put a serial number on the inside of the ukulele and I want the serial numbers to be there exclusively in the ones that I build. Uh, in part because I want the serial number to mean something and the serial number is in binary. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the prototype, my um, uh, plywood one, the serial number is 00000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. And so that allows me space to build up to 256 of them, which I'm not ever going to do given how long it takes me to do each of these. Oops. Um, <clears throat> but I just want to give myself a little bit of breathing room if I so desire. So, uh, so I, and I calculated out based on materials and two, three, four, uh, materials and cost in terms of what I paid to use the laser to do the cutting at crash space and my time and I figured on the plywood one and this is with cheap wood plywood's not free but it's you know it's pretty inexpensive um, which is odd because it's it's an engineered material it, it should actually be more expensive because it takes it takes energy time and energy for them to actually make the plywood you have to take lots of individual pieces of wood and glue them together but that's neither here nor there um, so, um, uh, so I figured, I sort of calculated that just to sort of cover my time and make it a little bit worth my while. I'd have to charge like a thousand dollars to make another one of the plywood ukuleles. And if you go into a guitar store, um, and look and ask them to show you like a nice concert ukulele, they cost, you know, a good high-end concert ukulele costs typically around a thousand dollars. So, uh, no, no one's, no one in their right mind would spend a thousand dollars on a plywood ukulele, even if it does look all boxy and like old eight-bit computer game graphics, video game graphics. Um, so it's it's a unique ukulele to i guess you could say but uh i don't think it's unique enough to warrant somebody spending that kind of money on it so but if they've got a laser cutter they can make their own that's kind of the point and now that i'm going in and looking at what it's going to take in terms of material and additional tools to make one out of the nice coal wood that I plan to use or as I said I might use mango um oops I hear lava this uh this branch might come to an end soon depending where that lava is you always have to be careful with falling gravel because there could be lava on top of it. So uh, I went through and sort of figured it out and looked at what what it's going to take me to actually do it, do the the next one the way I want to, and I think I would have to sell it for more than a thousand dollars. But given how, oh, there's the lava. A oh, smallish lava lake. So you can see the lava lake here was down below. They don't all generate at the same layer. So three, four. There we go. There we go. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so even out of plywood, the ukulele sounds pretty decent. I would think uh, plywood would not be the best tone wood. Um, one would expect uh, and the, uh, the the shape of it is such that um, the square all the square corners have to be playing havoc with the acoustics 
Uh, so, but anybody, all the people who play it, including people who are like, you know, serious musical instrument people, actually comment on how good it sounds because, and not just from the standpoint of, oh, look, there's diamonds. Okay, I found diamond. Good. So, now the question is, how do we get to it? Because I hear zombies. And I get some protection from from that lava lake. But not all the protection I might like. Yeah, see, Ravine, this this can get dangerous. Hi, Mr. Creeper. Oh, almost. That would have been impressive if I clocked him on the first shot. What is going on there? Is he behind a force field? There he goes. Okay. Ah. So when I do find diamonds, I always dig around them and then dig underneath them because you never know when there's lava underneath and you don't want your diamonds falling into lava. As I said, the two by two by two um, veins. So if I take another corner here, there and there. Uh, so I'm only going to get two diamonds out of this. But, hey, it's two diamonds. Very nice. Um, oh, hello. Okay, that redstone is not worth... Stupid bat. What's going on up there? I'm not going to venture too far into that ravine. Oh, let's get this iron. <clears throat> So this this is actually this is a good illustration of a spot where oh shoot <sighs> oh that hurt okay let's uh this is a good illustration of a point where I might just say screw it I'm done with this uh, with this branch ooh okay. Well, I got my my me my two diamonds. <laughs> Almost got blown up by a creeper, but we're good. So I'll wander back. How far did I get on this? It was at least fifteen hundred blocks, right? Sixteen hundred blocks, and we are underneath ocean. So that is a subterranean sub, yes, yeah, submarine ravine. Interesting. All right. Sorry, I keep getting uh, sidetracked. I keep starting to talk about the fact that with the uh, the changes that I'm planning on doing on the next ukulele, with the amount of energy, and I need to get some I need to get some tools that I don't currently have that are not going to be super cheap. Um, so I see why when people put this kind of energy into an instrument, uh, a ukulele that the sort of high-end, bespoke, completely handcrafted ones. Um, some of them go for $2,000, and I could easily see why people would charge for that kind of effort. So, um, I am, as I said, I'm going to build... What's going on here? Uh, come on. Fine motion. There we go. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so I am going to build another one out of some nice material, and I told a friend I would build one for him. And and then I have a brother-in-law who is a can actually play the ukulele beautifully, so I'm going to build one for him. So that's that's like three more that I need to build, and uh, so I can the assembly part. Uh, does take a bit of time as I said it's about two weeks of active assembly time but it's a lot of it is just like oh spend 20 minutes doing something and then wait until tomorrow 
Uh, and some of it you can assembly line if you have enough clamps and 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 things, but uh, I don't I don't really have enough of those sorts of things. So you can assembly line and by working if you've got three that you're working on, you could do the first bit on the first one, and then the next day do the next bit on the first one, and then do the first bit on the second one, and just sort of ripple them like that, which might I might end up doing. So I don't know. We'll see. I need we we're in the process of cleaning up the house and uh, working on arrangement of stuff a little bit. So I need some workspace for it. And as I said, I need a tool. I need a, I think I need to get a um, drum sander is, is the tool that I want to dimension the, uh, the panels to the thickness that I want. But, whoa, dark spot. And more zombies. Anyway, that's that. Um, next, so this, I'll release this on Monday, Memorial Day. So happy Memorial Day. Um, and hope you have a good long weekend if you're getting a long weekend. Uh, the following episode, we'll see if I get inspired to record something ahead of time. Otherwise, I may miss a week. I'm going to a I'm going to Boston the following weekend or next weekend in order to go see a, a concert by Matt Farley, who is a guy who's written nineteen thousand plus songs and he's gonna put on like a five hour concert sort of for his birthday. He calls it uh Motor Media Day. And um so I'm actually going to the concert in Boston. Or out, it's in it's in the suburbs of Boston, but it's near Boston, so that's that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting adventure. Here's a spot where I dug into some lava and had to deal with it. So anyway, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Land Party, and I will see you next time. Bye.